Hey everybody, thanks for joining us here on YouTube. If you like the video, make sure to mage hand us a thumbs up and subscribe to join our content guild. Also, leave a comment in that comment section down below and let us know if this episode inspired you or if you would have done it differently. And don't forget to ring that bell so that the algorithm goblins notify you whenever we drop a new episode. You can also attune to us on your podcast platform of choice and check us out across the planes of social media. Enjoy, Enjoy the episode! episode. How smart is this behemoth? Brilliant. It's a brilliant behemoth. It's like, get out of my home, intruder. <laughs> I'm like, oh, crikey, we gotta get out of here. Uh, this is one of seven languages that I speak. <laughs> Welcome to Dungeon Busters, your Dungeons and Dragons actual play experiment. I'm Diego, a professional dungeon master and actor. And I'm Michael, an actor and role-playing addict. Each episode, we summon a special guest who helps us give your game inspiration one encounter at a time. We don't just play D&D, we, we put, put it, it to, to the, the test. test. Hey everybody, welcome back to Dungeon Busters. I'm Michael, and with me today is Diego F. Salinas, and joined by our special guest today, Tommy Maloof. Yes, thanks for joining us, Tommy. We're Thank so happy to have you. Thank you yeah. for having me. I'm very excited. Yes. Very excited to have you here, Tommy. So uh, just to get off started, uh, let the audience know, like, what is your experience with D&D? Where are you coming from? I... Uh, I'm a, a Chicago theater artist, so I, you know, I, I, I act, I, I do some music, uh, and re only recently came into the D and D world, like within the last four or five years. Like I'm a very mm -hmm. like new initiate, all things considered. That said, like that's well, five years though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah that's yeah, like yeah, a good amount. Say, that's about when I started. I was maybe a little before then. But, Fair, yeah. but I mean, and then to 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 totally put it into like context too. I I teach also with CPS and I run a D and D club there. And like some kids there, like at this like the very tender age of thirteen, fourteen, are like experts, like know <laughs> yeah. everything there is to know. I was like, oh man, if I had like. Had I known about this back then, I probably would have been able to devote way more of my brain cells to it. But um, you know, throughout that four or five years, I've really, sure. really gotten into the into the 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 book buying, the everything, and the yeah. like, kind of finding out the lore. I dabbled in DMing way too soon before it mm. was even probably a good idea for me to start um, DMing. So it it, it was uh, you know, I, it's 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 the world's greatest role playing game. In case you didn't know, Amen. Mm -hmm. Trademarked. Uh, yeah. So you mentioned that you were running games for your students or? Yes. Yeah. So uh, what is I, that about? Tell us. So originally that was born out of necessity because I had no students DMing. Um, and this is only, it's a very, uh, it's still in its early infancy. But it's like a club or? Yes. Yeah, so it's a Dungeons and Dragon, Dragons oh, fantastic. club after school. And before we only had like around, we had too many kids to like run just one big game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And but like too few kids to run like to have enough DMs to like right. do the thing. So originally I was running two campaigns like on an alternate alternating week, and like kids could come and hang out, but like just mm -hmm. sit and view. Um, this year I'm lucky enough to have a, a student DM, so we are we are now running two different games. Just like oh, that's week. amazing. Like, yeah, it's awesome. And that's the kids awesome. a freshman. The kids like a DM and a freshman. I'm like. There's nothing more intimidating than a teenager who can quote precise pages oh, in the Dungeon Master's Guide. Yeah. He's on the varsity D&D team, Genuinely. so <laughs> as a freshman, so you better watch Whoa, out. Uh, Stepping into uh, the quarterback position as a DM. Yeah. Ole Miss is already looking to recruit him for their uh, competitive <laughs> D1. They do high fantasy. I mean, yeah, high fantasy. fantasy. Yeah, Notre Dame. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's amazing, dude. That's uh, it, I've played a little bit of D&D &D with kids. I've DM'd for kids before, and I find that they're such interesting players because usually they like have such a clear vision of what they want their character to be. Mm -hmm. I remember this one time I was DMing for a group of kids, like ranging from like 10 to like 13 and they found a treasure chest and they like, it was like further along in the quest and they knew, they knew that it had been robbed from like the quest giver. Right. And these kids, I was imagining, all right, okay, okay, let's imagine how this, they're going to try to divvy up this treasure, what they're trying to do. And they're like, no, this treasure belongs to Robert. We have to bring it back to Robert. And I was like, all right, let's go. Oh yeah, let's do this. <laughs> you guys are like lawfully inhabiting this world. Is that, is that your experience too? What do you find? Ooh, 
Uh, <laughs> definitely have some murder hobos in high school. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Um, I also have some kids who are like, you know, very, just very, very outgoing or neurodivergent folks who are just like, I want to, I like, I run towards, I run towards the light whenever it's like they're on death saving throws. I was like, wait, hold tight. Like, don't, yeah. don't do this um, I but, want it to end. <laughs> but I've also had that experience DMing for, for little kids where it's like, they will find such insane ways yes. around the problem. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, it, I, it, you just reminded me just kind of through what you're saying during, during the pandemic years and we were all kind of like, okay, now what? Um, I, I had gotten an account on out school and like been running some games online for, for little kids. And you know, like the, the weirdest things of like, where like, Oh, like, they're going to go in here and they're going to, you know, it's going to be an ogre. So they're going to want to fight that ogre. Yeah. And like the kids, like I just start digging. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, Oh, okay. He was like, I challenged the ogre to a digging contest. I'm like, <laughs> mm. yeah, yeah, you do. Let's yeah, do it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. It's like, Love it when only, only, only the mind of a child yes. can like, yeah, that's what that's, that's the yeah. way that I'm going to throw the gauntlet. And Their creativity is no longer hampered by society. True. They really have that pressure. They're just pure creative balls yeah. of energy. And you're like, yeah, Good digging time, competition. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. I love that. And also like very good practice as a DM to be like, oh, right. Like I totally thought this was going to go one way and like be ready to guess and enroll in a completely different direction. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. just expect it to go absolutely not the way that you thought it was going to go. Yeah. yeah. Good, good, solid advice there. Yeah. Awesome. Well, today we are covering the topic of dinosaurs. We are yes. busting dinosaurs. So I'd love to just kind of get a feel for y'all. What is what? Where do y'all imagine when you think of a fantasy world and dinosaurs? Do you have any like pop culture things that come to mind? Or I mean, Jurassic Park is the first one, but now yeah. that you mention it, there was this like underworld like underground dinosaur series, I think, or movie that I remember watching, but I don't remember the name of it. And it had the guy who played Professor Lupin in oh my it. God. He was like a main actor. It was so... It, it was wasn't so on weird. Discovery Kids by chance. It might have been. I don't know. It was definitely <laughs> weird where like, yeah, the CGI monsters were, or dinosaurs were not Jurassic Park level. Yeah. Certainly. Um, but it was, I don't know. I remember like... I liked it as a kid. But yeah. Yeah. If so at least in those worlds, that's the two things that come to mind. Yeah. Jurassic Park seems like the natural one and yeah. whatever this other mystery yeah. one was. Dinotopia, maybe? I, I remember one called Dino Sapiens, which was on Discovery Kids. And oh, it was about like was that, but. some earthquake, like opened up a chasm to a hidden world and like the these smart, smarter, more advanced, like bipedal dinosaur things were coming out i didn't watch it for too long so i don't know where they went with it but (laughs) how about you tommy oh man i mean Jurassic park was the first one to come to mind and then i'm I'm, now i'm totally also having that like mind wipe of was it just dinosaurs i'm the baby god love me oh is that oh oh, yeah yeah, 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 the the, the tv show the the tv show dinosaurs yeah um land before time was a very formative i think i fell off around 12 or 13 they got a little (laughs) off the rails much like a D &D campaign they like they're like okay i think it's time for this one to (laughs) yeah when they all went to space to fight the asteroid i was kind of lost in the land before time (laughs) this is no longer accurate i don't know if it ever really was but yeah um, and then the Flintstones. Flintstones but, uh, is classic. Classic, mm. you can't go wrong. I like that you the, the mention of the Flintstones because that's a really interesting one because that's one where dinosaurs and these prehistoric creatures are like domesticated. Correct. Like yeah. they are a, a part of society. That is one where they, it feels like the world is, yeah, they are one with the world that they're like created mm-hmm. in as opposed to Jurassic Park, which is like they aren't supposed to be here. And yeah. that's the, here we the go. dynamic. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, that's interesting. I've yet to do a rewatch of Flintstones and see if it like has aged well. I'm sure it hasn't. Just like in terms no, you of you got to like, watch the live action one with John Good. Correct. Yes, yes. <laughs> that is very very the one true Flint yes. stone. <laughs> one Flintstone to rule them all. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, when you're thinking about, I'm trying to think of like because you have worlds that have dragons in them, right? But mm-hmm. then like a T Rex is something entirely different. Yeah. And, like, are you going with this, like, lost world idea where it's, like, an isolated island 
uh, of creatures that aren't supposed to be alive or, you know, hollow earth, like King Kong style. Like, yeah. is there any, any, any like trope of dinosaurs that like really appeals to you? I feel like the, the lost earth one is the one that I'm like most familiar with, but I like the sort of Flintstones. It exists in this world. And I think that's like, I know as we sort of talked about this episode, it's like, man, we there's di- dinosaurs in the monster manual, but I'm always personally like, this feels weird. Like it feels weird to add this to my campaign. If I'm playing, especially if I'm playing like a fantasy campaign, mm-hmm. it does feel like it sort of breaks yeah. the world, but it's not even like, like it's in the OG monster manual. Yeah, right. <laughs> like not, not a fun really addition. Kind of- yeah. At least for, for five E and um, yeah. So I don't know. I just think that's interesting. i yeah. fun to play with like how would you actually put these into your game mm. i remember first seeing him on like in the monster manual being like holy shit there's a plesiosaurus in there well, i don't know if i, I can yeah you can say a plesiosaur right. yeah shit. <laughs> got that shit nailed it down um no it was a plesiosaurus i could say but i, I was, I, was <laughs> I forgot about cursing uh yeah, I but I, I i remember seeing dinosaurs in the manual be like oh my God, like how, how can we make this work? So mm-hmm. when you chose this topic, I was like, awesome. I've been, I've been wrestling with this exact question myself. The best like way that I could wrap my brain around it in like a fantasy capacity, especially knowing like having really done the, like the, the magic, the mage, the, like that aspect of it, I was like, what if there was something where either like a necromancer raised them yeah. up from the dead, or like there were dinosaurs who like somehow ingested something arcane and have just like mm. lived past the extinction. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. But I never really, really wrapped my brain around it and never really came to a conclusion. But I'd be like, oh yeah, this would be dope to do like a Jurassic Park yeah. one shot or to have that be some sort of right, yeah, fold it in there, yeah. There's, it's interesting because like the, the idea of like dinosaurs breaking the fantasy immersion is something that I thought of too. I th- and I think it comes from a place where we as 21st century humans know a lot about dinosaurs mm-hmm. and we know so much more about dinosaurs than when the monster manual was published. Like n- I, n- I didn't see a single feather on any of those dinosaur pictures. That's true. Um, but yeah, there seems to be like a some sort of dissonance that happens because we know of these actual monsters that existed in Mm -hmm. our world millions of years ago, but in the context of a fantasy world, they might just be like, oh yeah, and there's a triceratops over there. (laughs) Like, what do you want to do? Yeah, there's a bear too, and an owlbear. And a manticore. And a manticore, yeah, they are all, exactly, they are, you stack all these creatures next to each other, and they are meant to live together. And Yeah, somehow. Exactly. Yeah, a T Rex could just be a flightless dragon. Who knows? <laughs> like, that's like true. The dodo that's true. of uh, the dodo of, of the, the dragon dragon world. <laughs> that is funny. Well, yeah. let's go ahead and transition over to the Dungeon Busters lab, meet our characters, and put dinosaurs to the test. Alrighty, welcome to the Dungeon Busters Lab, Tommy. Uh, we'd love to go ahead and get a feel for the characters that uh, you and Michael brought into the game today. So why don't we start with you? Uh, what would you like to tell us about your level four character? Okay, so Thena Ferntree is a lever- level four ranger. Uh, when you had mentioned dinosaurs, I was like, okay, who would best, you know, not not and in, in, not in the spirit of uh, trying to min max, but I was like, okay, who would best like exist in a world with dinosaurs and i've been really really meaning to play a character that rachel house would play in a taika watiti movie Mm, yes and so you know that kind of that i've I've been i've been you know I've, i've had that in the back of my brain i've always wanted to play like a crocodile hunter esque character so i was like what if what if rachel house was and like, yes. like this is this is the moment. Mm. Um, yes. So I, I uh, you know, from there, Thena Thena Ferntree was born mm. and um, rolled very very poorly on some of her stats, which is exciting. I think yes. there's something really fun with that, and in that, like, to have characters who aren't necessarily like gonna be 
the best at what they do. Like, mm -hmm. I know I messed up on Shard. Shout out to Shard tabletop.com uh i messed up like already on the hit points so like her hit point max is like lower than what it should be already but, like with the whole <laughs> level one i was like great keep it who cares like, i love that <laughs> yeah but yeah athena is a an outlander ranger i had a really hard time finding or choosing a background for like a steve irwin-esque mm. like zoologist like mm -hmm. i was wondering i was like okay do i go sage background but sage is like you're in libraries all the time i was like mm -hmm. it kind of works but like and like you you can always fudge it like i could have just said sage but like she's a sage who goes out in the wilderness yeah. or like like a field sage right yeah um because i really do enjoy that like zoology aspect of someone who you know, loves nature in a way and, you know, is there for the love of it and there to to learn about it. So I thought that will also kind of create some interesting tension between um, the fact that she doesn't want to, like, kill dinosaurs. I don't, I don't think of her as, like, dinosaur hunter, but um, this person who is, like, really... Uh, like enthusiastic or well versed in in dinosaur and yeah. and uh, follows that aspect, which is also kind of funny because with the ranger you get like favored enemy, and I'm like I know Thena doesn't think of of dinos as her enemy, but like the fact that she would know that right. that would be like her area right. of expertise. How does the crocodile hunter fit in a fantasy world? Is she just like <laughs> dictating? information to a <laughs> companion like keep come on I, I i fully appreciate the fact that like she very well might be narrating to no one in specific yeah, that's <laughs> hilarious it's like, like talking a lot right now what you're gonna see he is and like, or, or if she's got like a little journal with like a magic quill that like writes and like dictates percent. that she can dictate to yeah awesome that. well welcome to the table uh thena fern tree thank you Let's pass it over to Michael. Michael, tell us about your character. Yes, I'm playing Wolfsbane Hammer Smash. Um, I'm a fourth level uh, dwarven fighter herbalist. So, yes, yeah, my family does. I uh, trained as a soldier for a long time, uh, wielding war hammer and axe. Um, but I really like flowers a lot, and I think they're really pretty. It's nice. Um, yeah, and I, it's just incredible what they can do. Some are actually really dangerous, and I have used them often to poison weapons and things like that. It just comes in handy when you're fighting things to be able to add poison to it. But absolutely, you know that's that. I don't like to talk about that as much. Um, but yeah, so um, I, you know, I like exploring the wilderness and finding new plants and things like that. So I think Dean and I get along. Pretty well, we have, you know, she's looking for different creatures and animals, and I'm finding different leaves that have different potencies and flowers and that bloom at certain times of the year and things like that. So, yeah, I'm, we, we, I think we get along pretty well. He's great. He's great, Blake. Yeah. Amazing. Well, welcome to the table, Wolfsbane Hammer Smash. <laughs> so, where do you find yourselves today? The Arouge Plateau rises out of the Nalishan jungle like a great table whose edge is dotted by waterfalls. In order to prove the worthiness of your fallen companion, a local holy man has challenged you to retrieve a feather from a four-winged gliding raptor that dwells on the remote plateau. If the feather is returned, this holy man will cast a resurrection spell on your fallen friend. And when you find yourselves already atop the plateau, tall grass ripples like the sea as you walk through a lush meadow encircled by thick rainforest. All around you, scaly behemoths gorge themselves on grasses while towering long-necked behemoths graze the treetops. Across the meadow are the purple-flowered trees said to be favored by the four-winged raptor. Nearby, an armor-tailed behemoth with a thick beaded rope hanging from its neck grunts as it drags a dead branch to a clutch of rock-like eggs nested amongst the grass. Suddenly, tension sweeps through the meadow as the behemoths bellow out to each other and eye both you and the tree line cautiously. What would you all like to do? You see if they... There's some signals going on over there and I'm not... I think we would provoke him, but I really would like to get in there. Right. Let's um 
I got to make sure that I don't start doing an Aussie Singing accent. Contagious, I'm really sorry. <laughs> it is a bit contagious, but I do, I do, I do like listening to it. Um, all right, let's let's be quiet and let's. Um, so, have we seen the the feathered raptor that we're looking for? You have not had eyes on the raptors yet. They are small and elusive. Um, but they are known to hang out in the uh, purple-flowered uh, branches of the tall trees of the rainforest, okay. in the canopy. Well, let's, I think, first, just since we're getting the sense of danger, immediate danger, I, my instinct is to hide somewhere, like under a, a dead tree or log or something, yeah. just to see what might be coming out of the brush before we, uh, you know, we don't want to suddenly be in the way of a big Skirmish. lizard. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Roll a stealth check, please. All right. This is not going to be my best skill. Okay. I got a 12. Nice. With a 12, uh, even with the clanking of your uh, heavy armor, you are able to uh, squeeze uh, yourself between like a, f- a dead log and some tall grasses that provide optimal cover uh, both to your rear and to your front. You still have uh, some sight lines on some of the uh, behemoths that are uh, grazing in this meadow. They are all still tense and uh, looking around warily, sniffing the air. You know, we gotta, we gotta get this feather to save uh, Bastion. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he I'm, fell so horribly. I'm, ke- I'm still kicking myself because uh, you know I, I, I had I had cure wounds and I I, I, I didn't prep it that day. And uh, uh, you, you know what? He shouldn't have been standing in the middle of. The nest, hey, like he got distracted, by, uh, trying to look over the edge. But he did it. Uh, the black did a bad job. Yeah, it was bad. It was bad. Okay, um, I guess I I feel like I almost. Well, maybe let's just wait a second to see what comes out of of the woods, or or we could head. I feel like we have to get to the top of the tree somehow. Yeah, uh, it feels like we're going to have to do a little bit of climbing. I mean, I'm, yeah, y'all are like two football fields away from like the tree line too. Oh, okay. So we got to get closer to the tree line. Yeah. Um, okay. I mean, I'm happy to run interference and, uh, and uh, you know, try and, try and uh, if, 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 yeah, if you feel like climbing trees or, uh, but, uh, you know, uh, let's, right. let's, let's, let's get in a little bit. I, All right. Nina you, smears mud over her face as yeah. she starts to like... <laughs> Try and camouflage yourself as yeah. best as possible. Roll a stealth check. <laughs> and with an eight, uh, you smear uh, mud in your face. Uh, as you're doing so, you're like kind of not not as aware of where you're grabbing the mud from, and you like part some leaves, and you are now face to face with a scaly behemoth with these uh, like these triangular like plates that ridge its spine. Uh, it's looking at you and. Mm-hmm. Hey, 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 little fella. It's all right, it's all right, it's all right. Um, how close are they out of curiosity? You are like 10 feet from this okay. thing. And it is like enormous. You can hear that its bellow is, has been echoed and picked up by some of the other behemoths in the meadow. I would like to try and cast Animal Friendship. Yes. All right. All right. Let me see here. If the beast's intelligence is four or higher, the spell fails. Let Correct. Me. How smart is this behemoth? Brilliant. It's a brilliant <laughs> It's like, get out of my home, intruder. <laughs> I'm like, oh, crikey, we got to get out of here. Uh, this is one of seven languages that I speak. <laughs> no, yeah, you. your spell works. As you see the magic uh, kind of like dilate the pupil of this uh, large scaly behemoth, you notice that it, um, it kind of breathes out and exhales uh, in a more relaxed That's way. Cool. Fila, how's it going? All right, you've been going, you big fella. Huh? Yeah, you can see that, like, standing right behind this behemoth is uh, another clutch of uh, eggs. Oh, see, look, there you got little kitties there, huh? don't you? Mm. Oh, look at that. How many, how many you got here? You got one, two, three. Mm. Okay, hey, hey, come here. In the wolf's bite, look here. Okay. So we got a little, little I, I, don't, I can't tell if it's a, if it's a, if it's a mom or a dad or... Roll uh, an animal handling check. Let's see here, buddy. Come on. Shy. He's a 19. Oh, yeah. It's a uh, female. All right. We got a mama here. Is there, uh, is there any uh, plant life nearby that I would know maybe to be edible to this creature? Go ahead and roll a nature check. Oh. Okay, okay. That's not a 10. 10, yeah. There's some grasses that you can see have been, like, chomped off. Okay. On, and, like, there's, like, a lot of them, like, okay. in this area here. 
I uh, I slice off a bit with my hand axe and, and just bring a handful over mm. to this behemoth. Pretty mm. hungry little fella, huh? You're not a little fella, you're a little lady, but... Yeah. We almost uh, fell into the same fate as Bastion there. I suddenly have a lot more sympathy for <laughs> getting yourself in the middle of a bunch of uh, behemoth nests. Well, uh, to be fair, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't do the best uh, little observation of, uh, of my surroundings. But. <laughs> um, now... Would uh, Wolfsbane know, Athena, are, are you more of a ranged combatant or more of an up close? Uh, so I did take, uh, Athena did take the, the grappler feet. So like in, okay. in the event, uh, in okay. true crocodile hunter fashion, like nice. I think she's, she's, I think as, as much as humanly possible, I don't, I don't want, I don't want to kill anyone or I don't want to kill anything. These are, these are beautiful animals there. Yeah. They're, they're, they're delicate. And even though they're, they're completely vicious and they'll rip it, they'll crush you in a second. Uh, they, you know, they really are got gorgeous and, uh, yeah, I, I don't, I don't, so I, anything we can do to, to subdue it or, but, uh, I'd, yeah, uh, well, Spain is sweating, hoping he, hoping that Thena doesn't look at his uh, dinosaur skin boots. I mean, that's the beautiful thing, isn't it? Is that you know, in life, the, you, there's it's all part, it's all it's all part of a circle. You mm-hmm. know, you got to you know, sometimes yeah, yeah, they do yeah. got to keep you know, that balance in order in order to uh, in order to leave. Sometimes things do you have yeah. to die, and you like know? Uh, the people who are killing snakes in Florida because they have they're an way, invasive species. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and 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 when you kill that snake, you're gonna need some snake skin. Uh, yeah, you gotta, you, gotta you gotta make some. Gotta make every part of the snake. Yeah. I, I think that's. I think um, it's important. Well, well, I say maybe we should uh, head towards the tree line. Then yeah. maybe making our way carefully, trying to avoid any uh, behemoth so. nests that right. we can. Mm-hmm. And Mumsy, I hope you sleep well. I hope your kids give a good nap. Uh, yeah, and we'll make our way to the tree line. Amazing. Um, yeah, as you're walking uh, through, leaving behind this mama behemoth. Uh, going through the grass carefully, uh, Dina, you are not as quiet as Wolfsbane, but you are making your way through, and you're able to navigate around the edges of uh, some of the more uh, agitated behemoths here. Um, before you come up uh, against a couple that have like backed themselves up, like a lot of the, like large ones, like right near the tree line, these are big armored behemoths. Their tails look like a like a mace. Uh, ending in these uh, big, uh, bulbous, spiky um, uh, ends. Mm-hmm. And as you're getting near here, you see a, a, a herd of these that have kind of like backed up with their backs to the tree line. Um, and behind the adults are a lot of the young and some other nests. Uh, they are standing between you and the purple flowered trees. What would you like to do? What do you think? Are they blocking those? Are they blocking those? Uh, uh, hours? I'd say it looks like they're they're blocking those flowers. Um, um. Well, I suppose we could try to. I mean, we could try to just maybe distract them or something, or um. Yeah. Do you have any ideas? I feel, I feel like I. I mean, I'm happy. I'm happy, especially if I can you know get in touch with one without them you know more than. My, my eyes out. I mm-hmm. uh, I think I, I I can I can ask them how many we need. We just one one right. We just and they, they they eat them right. Um, uh, the f- the purple flowers. Yeah, they're like they're snakes. Are they? Do it looks look like they're eating the purple flowers. No, no, no. The the purple flowers are like on the canopy of this rainforest. Uh, that that's like a hundred feet up easy. Okay. These are lower to the ground behemoths. They have scaly. Uh, like armor plates all along their shoulders and back, uh, okay. and their tail is ending in this like club, like okay. mace type thing. All right. um, they aren't in. They are still like in the meadow. They're just kind of like they've like kind of made this defensive circle around their young, about fifty yards from the okay. the end of the meadow okay. uh, before you get to the tree line. Okay. So really, we we need to find a way to get around them so we can get to the tree line and then. Get our way up into the trees. Yeah. Um. Let's see. I mean, we could just we could just move, maybe move around them. Um. Let's see. I have a cantrip called uh, Mold Earth. Yeah, dude. You choose a portion of dirt or stone that you can see within range that fits within a five foot cube, and you manipulate it in one of the following ways. 
Uh, excavate it, move it along the ground, and deposit it up to five feet away. <laughs> I'm kind of picturing, like, trying to move this, like, so I picture a sort of, like, earth bending almost, where I'm, yeah. like, picking up this little five-foot uh, mound of dirt mm -hmm. and trying to, like, just move it, with, like, underneath the meadow so the grasses will also help hide us and just yeah. sort of like make a little path around them oh i love that and That's just sort of like continue to move it just like a wall of earth like yeah. blocking line of sight it looks like a big dinos. mole like yeah rolling by i'll see a lot we'll, we'll, we'll see. see amazing go ahead uh uh both of you roll a stealth check with advantage okay cool oh, cool cool, cool. We'll see that's good it. hopefully that helps <laughs> that's an eight still with advantage Let's see. I think I'll get advantage on that one. Ah, 16. Nice. 16 and 8. My first one was a 7. And my second one was an 8. See? Sometimes it be like that. All right. Uh, with... Uh... <laughs> I, I think I realized doing that can't like, yeah, like I, so it makes more noise than I realized. I was like, oh, it's, it's really hard to do this quietly. Feel. The sound of the earth churning does make these armored behemoths um, a little bit more agitated. But to them, they are seeing the earth uh, move uh, before them. And with Thena's uh, careful, quiet steps, you are both able to navigate around the perimeter of these armor-tailed behemoths okay. and into the tree line where the purple-flowered um, trees are. You break into the shade of the rainforest canopy, and within a few steps, the sound of the meadow is drowned out by the buzzing, chirping, cawing denizens of the treetops. The ground is soft and loamy underfoot, covered by a healthy carpet of brown leaves. High above you, large moths flit around the purple-flowered branches, occasionally snatched out of the air by gliding raptors. An eroded stone face protrudes from the trunk of a large tree that seems to have slowly engulfed the statue. You can hear the four-winged raptors chirping above as they snack on the moths. What would you like to do? Now, can we recognize, are those the raptors we need to steal a feather from? Roll a nature check. For four. Oh, nice. You have no earthly idea. Look at, look, look, look at how many, I mean, look at how many eyes the, the yeah. wolves have, and just the how relentless they are when they like rip them open with their with their tail ends. No, oh, that's that's. I think I think Wolfsbane is sort of distracted by this stone statue, yeah, and is gonna walk over it's to it. Like it's a like a dwarven thing, or a, yeah, he's like. <laughs> That seems like well-crafted stone to have lasted this long. Mm -hmm. I wonder where it came from because the tree has grown around it. Yeah, yeah. It looks like this the the trunk of the tree is like engulfing uh, yeah. this stone face that is protruding from the. Uh, I think he feels a bit like a metaphor of like this contrast between stone and nature, yeah. and him like, you know, his mother was a f worked in the dwarven forges and his father was more into plants and things like that before he disappeared so he's sort of like and he likes plants and things but it's also been like forged to be tough yeah. so he is sort of drawn into this this metaphor and he's gonna go check it out all right yeah you go uh up to the statue and you can see that it is very well weathered and worn um, you know, some of like uh, like the tip of its nose is, has been long chipped off, mm. um, and you can see that a lot of the fine features have been weathered down by the elements. Um, yeah, is there anything you'd like want to take a look at specifically? Yeah, I guess I'm wondering like, is this? Can I tell maybe who might have carved this? Like, was this uh, ancient civilization I might be aware of? Mm. Roll a history check. Meanwhile, what are you thinking, Dina? So. How how aware would you say of the like circle? Of life? I'm just I'm going back to that one over and over now. Uh, how aware of the like food chain or like who hunts these these raptors or like what is, what's is the is the T Rex the apex apex predator or um, mm. is there is there a speci uh, 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 specifically if if we would know yeah who is who hunts the whatever these are yeah roll roll a nature check nature. 
That's not going to do it. Isn't it? It's, a, it's a one. So you're looking at the at the four winged gliding raptors above you. They're eating the moths, right? And you've seen the behemoths out in the in the meadow, and all of those were eating grass. Um, that is, you kind of just are aware of that, uh, but you surmise that maybe there is some meat on meat action happening somewhere in this <laughs> plateau. I I wonder if um. If we are able to catch some of those moths and climb up into the tree, if maybe we uh, can catch one of these raptors, or, or maybe that, or maybe we can get at least a closer look, we know that they're going to be up high gonna be, yeah. in the trees. How uh, how big are these raptors that we're looking at? Like, if yeah. we were to hop on, where, would they be able to like us up in the? Uh... Yeah, let me see right here. These are like tiny size, like. Right. Uh, like, like cat sized, little, little. like sm- yeah, like cat sized at the biggest, but like m- more, like not like a big cat. Okay, or like an owl, maybe. like an yeah. owl. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. That may be a better, a better analog, <laughs> and, and a, a different animal that also flies. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I can try and like make a little smell with uh, you know, like if we want to give them a whiff of a scent, like a, a of the moth, oh. then I could use like. Druid craft and yeah. uh, you know, we'll see if I can maybe. Uh, we should probably try to get at least a little ways up into the trees oh, first, right. but then we could do that. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. It was. Did I notice anything with that stone? Yeah. Roll a perception check. Oh yeah. What did you get on your history check first? I got a fourteen. Fourteen. You don't know of any like civilizations on this plateau. Certainly none that have like. Mm-hmm. Are in current contact with anyone in the surrounding jungle. Yep. Um, even though the the Nalishan jungle is well traveled, especially by you know the indigenous populations of it, the plateaus are seen as sort of like um, like holy ground, the okay. the land closer to the gods. So people tend to uh, mm-hmm. leave those places in reverence, except for like these uh, these moments of like uh, these tests of mm. strength and um, vitality. Uh, but you can roll a perception check on the stone statue, too. That's going to be 14 as well. 14, yeah. As you're walking around the edges of this statue here and around the tree that is engulfing it, uh, underfoot, under the carpet of leaves, you are able to feel what feels like worn stone steps underfoot. Oh, look at this. Oh, I wonder if these... Where are these... These might help us get higher. Yeah, it's uh, all, it looks like there's like some sort of runes or uh, yeah. some yeah. sort of. I think I'll try to follow the steps and see where they lead. Yeah, they just kind of curve around the side of the tree and down, uh, like the side of like a, a little bit of a hill. You see that they end uh, places where the leaves aren't as thick on the floor. You can see the the edges of the stone and you can see that it comes to an end at the base of this like small hill surrounded by trees overgrown is a mossy effigy hey, wolf spine do you, do you what do you reckon do you think uh, what, what was the holy man's uh whole bag do you know do you remember what what sort of deity he worshipped or uh oh, i i don't know if i recall i could do I recall? <laughs> with a, with a, with, with a, is there? Is there? As as we kind of like remember, like whole, like what seemed to be like religious, yeah. or do we? Was there any recollection of like symbolism that he had? Maybe a, a yeah. Status? There were a lot of like um, it, for the Nalishan tribe that you had been uh, in contact with. The, they were worshiping a more of a frog-footed like deity. Like that was like the the Crikey. the vision of it, right? Like it's uh, usually depicted as. A humanoid of some sort with like frog feet and frog hands. Okay. Um, okay well, I'm not too familiar with what um, he seemed to be practicing, but I just know that if we get him this feather, and he, he can bring back Bastion. Buddy. And, uh, I mean, he was. I tried to scribble down everything that you say, but he's much better at it. Uh, yeah. He's a quick, quicker <laughs> hand than I. Got a, he's got a good short hand, yeah, but I'm, I'm uh, a quite, bit deft in that <laughs> area <laughs> myself. Um, but. Um, well, let's let's look at this, uh, the, and uh, Wolfsbane will walk up closer to the effigy uh, and see what is is it a frog like creature or yeah, yeah. We'll see what it is for sure. Uh, you walk up to the effigy and you're seeing that it is uh, effigy again, very worn, very old. 
uh, but it is of like a snouted humanoid. Uh, it's, mm. The features are very, very worn, so you can't tell much detail, but you can see that it is some sort of humanoid with a snout. Okay. Well, snoot on this one. Uh, cool. oh, this is uh, interesting. It's pretty cool shit. That's pretty cool. Yeah. But uh, I don't know if it's going to help us get to the top of the trees. I don't reckon. Yeah. Um, how high is it to like the very top of the trees? Hundred feet. Hundred feet. Okay. Oh, we got an explorer's peak of ours, huh? Eh? Well, do you have do you have a line of rope, perhaps? I think I do. Yeah, I think that okay. comes with the uh, pick. So I've got I think uh, so I've got a line of rope that's that's fifty feet, mm-hmm. and I believe you do too. Yep. I've got two hand axes uh, that I have attuned to. Nice. Um, so I would like to, uh, as part of my weapon bond uh, mm. feature, uh, I've I've attuned. So I've got my war hammer, yeah. and then I've attuned uh, two weapons to my my throwing axes. It's middle as hell. And they have this beautiful like floral uh, etching on them. But what I'd like to do is take um, take the the length of rope, mm-hmm. and I'd like to uh, try to. Th- try to throw it about 40 to 50 feet and and wedge it into the tree yeah, so nice. we can use it to like scale the tree nice like, um belay. repel up the tree or belay up yeah, the tree yeah. yeah go ahead and roll a uh like a strength check okay Let's see just to see how just straight <clears throat> straight well embedded yeah it's gonna be 17 17 Woo! yeah 45 feet <laughs> The axe sticks into the trunk of one of these vine-covered trees. Nice. Uh, the nice hundred line. feet of rope dangling from the uh, the handle. Excellent. And I'll um, cool. Yeah, I think I was gonna. Oh, I guess I could have just aimed for the very top. Eh. But I was thinking I would this do like cooler. fifty feet for one, and then climb up, and then throw the rest of the eh. way. Try to. So we'll see. So I'm gonna try to climb like halfway up. Eh. Yeah, great. Go ahead and roll an athletics check. Okay. Athletics. And what are you doing, Thina? Uh, aside from uh, you know, keeping keeping watching, kind of keeping my ear to the like going around i uh you know I, I, want, I want him to get into at least to a point where like he can land on a branch and then i'll start to follow up once he feels solid yeah with uh you are taking a close uh look around in the in the uh forest here athena as wolf spain begins to scale the uh scale the the trees with a 13 between the vines that choke the trees and your uh rope embedded axe uh, in there, you are able to climb about like 50 feet up and find a safe perch on uh, like a large branch protruding from there. Uh, the four winged gliding raptors are still high above, feasting on the moths, enjoying their time. It is at this moment, Thena, that you see a small feathered creature about the size of a turkey come into your field of view in the clearing. Little buddy. It stops for a moment. <laughs> What's your, what's your little hey, psst, my go, go. <gasps> I like breeze climbing I'm sort of perched up on the branch and I look down look look down at you is, uh, some, uh, so do I do I recognize what kind of creature this is go ahead and roll a nature check <laughs> should have put more in wisdom so I was better at nature checks Dude. that's a 19 though yeah, 19 yeah. yeah with that 19 uh you uh, have seen this creature not like in person, but you've heard stories yeah. of it. Yeah, of a small. The coloration matches the, the the descriptions you've heard, and you know that these are creatures that tend to uh, attack livestock uh, for, in the Nalishan jungles, um, as well as uh, creatures that are are generally like in packs. Yeah. Um, oh, and as you're looking at it it suddenly hisses at you and its feathers seem to like puff up a little bit. <sighs> I understand, I understand. Um, Everyone roll initiative. Yeah, buddy. Yes. <laughs> I'm only 50 feet away. <laughs> it's just a straight jump down. Uh, so you see uh, this creature here come out. Uh, it's small, about the size of a large turkey, feathers on its small arms. Uh, it's got hooked talon claws on both of its feet. Uh, and it looks at you uh, slightly. Can both of you please make a wisdom saving throw? Oh, no. Yes. Wisdom saving throw. Whee. 
Nat 20. Nat 20. <laughs> you are both able to uh, not be as distracted by the uh, the feathered creature as you see all around you that there are six other one of these hiding in the in the brush uh, encircling uh, Thena. Uh, starting with initiative count 20, we are going to go to Thena for entry. What would you like to do? Ah, oh, crikey. Here we are, aren't we? We think, you know, you don't have to do this. Like, I, um... Oh, boy, you don't want to strike first, but... Um... <laughs> yeah, you play it however you you want your character to play it. I do think... Thena's gonna do what Thena do best, and Thena's just gonna try and, like, come on, yeah, come on, and then, like, whoosh, like try and restrain it in just, like, <laughs> a, as non-lethal, non-violent of a way as possible. Yeah, great. It's, like, 20 feet from you, yeah. so feel free to uh, go and... Are you just trying to grapple it? Sure. Yeah, I think, I think just to, like, try and incapacitate it, she can work a little bit with her, uh... All right, let's roll Contested Strength. Uh, and see how your grapple fares. Is that just a strength roll? Yeah, straight strength. I, I think I I have advantage on attack rolls against a creature that I'm grappling because I took the grappler feet. Perfect. Uh, nice. You are you are now grappling uh, the creature since it, it failed its uh, contested strength check. So you managed to just like put this turkey in a chokehold. Right. <laughs> who's, who, who, who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? <laughs> come on, come on. <laughs> Come on, big guy. Yes. All right, so that's uh, your action and some of your movement. Uh, what else would you like to do? I think that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to try and, like, get a... Oh, it's all right, little filly. You don't have to whine. It's all right. I got you. <laughs> um, I think I'm uh, going to try and, like, clock as best as possible to see how the other turkeys are are responding. Not yeah. turkeys, but uh, right. little critters. Awesome. Yeah, they, they are all in position. If, if you pass turn, we can... Uh... <laughs> I think she will, uh... In part due to their ambush feature, all of these velociraptors get a chance to move as they begin circling. Just, they are literally, like, taking up every square inch around you here, Athena. You have six other small feathered turkeys oops, who are literally surrounding you. Um, as we pass turn, as we go now to the turkey that you are grappling, uh, and it is going to make a contested strength check to try and break the grapple. 16. Uh, yes. Do I roll against that? Yeah, roll against that. Uh, and is this, and it, would this also be an advantage because of the grappler feet? It says advantage on attack rolls against a creature, so I feel yeah. like that is if I am Yeah, if you are attacking them. the one that you've already grappled, it would be. Yeah. But if this is them, this is them fucking you up, yeah. Great. Well, it's a 16. 16, 16, the grapple stays. High goes. <laughs> all right. It's like, all right, all right, you big fella. All right, nice. it's all right. As this first, uh, the, the velociraptor that you are grappling is going to try and make its very first bite attack with its multi-attack. Uh, disadvantage since it is grappled. Come on, don't be like An this. eight to hit on the first. Uh, great, so ve the Velociraptor failed on both of its bite and claw attacks trying to get at you, Thena, while the other uh, Velociraptors have now whoosh, circled all around you. Okay. Wolfsbane, you are still 50 feet up in a tree. Uh, you can see it's just to the right of where uh, Thena is encircled. Um, what would you like to do? The um, gliding Raptors are 50 feet above you. I think um, seeing uh, Thena surrounded... Uh, my my uh, military instincts <laughs> kick in uh, and some of the, the magical warfare training that I received as an eldritch knight. Uh, I'm going to cast magic missile uh, as three darts still. Um, let's do them all at just the closest one to that I can see that uh, yeah. that has its back to me. Perfect. I'm going to do all three of them at that one. Beep, all beep. right, great. Go ahead and roll that damage. Plus five is ten points of damage. Yeah, you managed to kill one of these uh, feathered turkeys. Excellent. Dead. Oh, nice. Okay. 
yeah, I just uh, I l- look down, seeing Thena around. Thena, and I uh, sort of spin my my war hammer around and point it in that direction, and these yeah. three glowing uh, darts shoot out and uh, hit that uh, the turkey looking creature. Uh, and then with my uh, movement, I'll, I'll try to slide uh, halfway down the tree. Great, yeah. Oh, yeah, what's your movement? Uh, 25. All right, 25 it is. Okay. So I'll go halfway down, uh, sliding off the rope that I have uh, embedded. Yeah, the rope grows hot in your hands as you slide down 25 feet and come to a stop. Okay. It smells like Thanksgiving. Yeah. <laughs> All right. With that, we're going to go now to the next Velociraptor uh, in this uh, encounter here. And this one is going to also use its claw and bite attack on uh, our grappled uh, Athena here. Or Athena, who is doing the grappling. Um, Perfect. With a 12... Do they have advantage on you since you are doing grappling? I I want to say yes. Yes. So if you succeed... You and the creature are both resta- restrained. And restrained, like okay. Let me see. Yeah, then restrained effect. This attack is- rolls against you have advantage, and your attack rolls have disadvantage. But because you have the grappler feet, your rolls have are, are regular advantage. Uh, great. So awesome. This Velociraptor is going to make uh, an attack with its uh, bite attack uh, with advantage with a 19 to hit Ew. as it hits you for three points of piercing damage, following it up with an advantaged claw attack with an eight to hit that glances off your armor. Passing over to the next Velociraptor, it is going to follow suit with an advantaged 5 to hit and an advantaged 17 to hit. 17 is going to Piercing hit. you with 3 points of piercing damage. Right. Going straight down the line here, another one. Bite. Advantage. 21 to hit. Yep. Ooh. And claw with advantage. 9 to hit, so you're only going to take the bite attack for 7 points of piercing damage. Whee! Going down the line. Man. Bastard 20. Yeah. And a 15. Both will do it. All right. No. As you take three points of piercing and an additional six points of slashing. As we go now to the other Velociraptor. (laughs) Make an advantage bite attack. 17 to hit. Advantage claw attack. Bastard 20 to hit. We go for seven piercing from the bite and five slashing from the claws. Okay, yeah, Athena's down. (laughs) Oh, no! Uh, She's down with that first seven. Now, there's a thing that is uh, reduced. Well, I don't know if I want to... I mean, you're down. That would be the time. (laughs) Uh, So, as an orc, or half-orc, she has relentless endurance, which is when reduced to zero hit points but not killed outright. You can drop to one hit point instead, but I think the five is... No, no, no. It doesn't it, oh. killed outright is only if you take like uh, half half of your total like negative. like it's negative, negative. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay so no you you your relentless uh, endurance can definitely keep you up at one HP right now Whee! Okay. as we go back to the top of the yeah. order with Thena Thena's gonna kiss a uh, uh, first level cure wounds on herself mm-hmm. and um. That is 1d8 plus 3. Correct. So she's going to heal herself for 6 points of health. And uh, is going to let go of of the turkey. Great. You release the grapple. And it's going to provoke some opportunity attack, I believe. But I think she's going to try and... Is she able to get out of the way or at least try and... You can, like, push through them for sure, yeah. Yeah. I think she'll go as far out as possible. All right. We're going to take seven opportunity fight attacks with advantage due to their pack tactics. Yeah. 22 to hit on the first with a four piercing damage. Yeah. 22 to hit on the second for another four piercing damage. And she's down again. <laughs> oh, no. No. Right, and that, so that then, yeah, you, you're, let's say your body like kind of collapsed. <laughs> she's uh, like, I'm going to skid it. Oh. All right. We pass turn now to, 
Let's see here. After Athena, it would be uh, one of these Velociraptors who is going to come in with a bite attack on you. Uh, with a 12 to hit, it is gonna you're gonna incur two death, uh, yeah. failed death saving throws. Oh man, I gotta get these things All right. off of Wolf Spain, get in there. Okay, uh, I'm gonna slide the rest of the way down. Um, uh, so I will be at the bottom of the tree line, tree, which would be there. Perfect. Um, I will bonus action call my axe embedded into the tree. Nice. Uh, so it, it sort of disappears from the tree and, and appears magically in my hand. Um, I have I have used all of my movement to get the next 25 feet down. Yep. I want to cast a spell. Oh, I can show you what that looks like thanks to Shard Tabletop. You yes. See a 15 foot I cube, would love maybe? a 15 foot cube around me. Uh, it is centered on you, but... A 15 foot cube originating from you must make Okay, so when it uh, when a cube uh, effect spell uh, originates from you, like you your like hand that's casting it, for example, is one face of that cube. Oh, so okay, cool. A cube uh, like right in front of you. Okay, so uh, Wolfbane is going to slide the rest of the way down. Uh, as he drops the last ten feet, he will summon his uh, axe in one hand and smash the ground with his war hammer in the other hand, casting thunder wave. Nice. Uh, so they have to make a, a DC 10 constitution saving throw or take 2d8 thunder damage right. and are pushed 10 feet away from me Woo. on a failed Beautiful. Save. Awesome. So we're going to go uh, clockwise here starting at the 12 p.m. with the uh, one that is nearest Thena. Okay. Con save of 11 succeeds. Mm -hmm. uh, con save of 18 succeeds. Con save of 6 fails. Yes. Con save of 8 fails. Nice. Con save of seven fails. Nice. Con save of two fail. Yeah. So all but the first two are going to be taking that full effect of your uh, spell here. Roll Excellent. And that is going to be 12 points of damage. Boom. You kill one, two, three, four of these turkeys instantly go down. Yes. Uh, do, do the other ones take half damage? They take half damage and are put, uh, and the other ones are, they're, their carcasses are flown uh, 15 feet. Oh, yeah. You just see corpses <laughs> yeah. smashing into the tree line. But here. on a success, I don't think they get pushed back. Um, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, you just killed four of these uh, yeah. creatures. Anything else with your turn? Uh, I think just for flavor, I'm going to say, come at me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one of these uh, these raptors turns around to face you uh, and moves around to get a uh, a nice like flank on you. Excellent. It bear or actually, it's gonna just dash straight at you. Gonna run for you, uh, coming at you with a pounce attack. Mm -hmm. I took the dual wielder feat, Whee! so by summoning my uh, my axe, I get a plus one to AC because I'm holding my hammer and axe both. Awesome. I got a bastard 20 to hit on you and <laughs> That's gonna uh, hit. an eight. The eight is going to miss. The claws will deal onto you three points of slashing damage. Okay. As we go back to the top of the order, Athena Fentry, before you roll this death save, you hear a roar coming out of the of the jungle here and it shakes and rattles the trees leaves begin to fall down in like a waterfalls of of just like fallen leaves you see that the gliding raptors take off uh further deeper into the jungle and the raptors look around the surviving raptors look around nervous before they also decide to cut their losses and run out of this uh like just dash out of this uh okay out of this clearing here um they are they have both left the Velociraptors okay. have, have, are, are like looking to looking to go. Um, Thena, uh, we are out of combat right now. Um, Can I do an opportunity attack from my dead bot? No. No, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you, you are you are like got drool coming out of your mouth right now. You got um, pecked to death. Yeah. I think if we're out of combat, yeah, I would out of combat. rush over and uh, administer a, a health potion. Yeah. I have one in my pack to um, to Athena. Two uh, d four plus two. For a total of 10 HP. God bless you. Great. So I, I crouch Thena's head in my in my hands, cork, uh, pop the cork off this bottle and just like gurgle it down Thena's throat. Come on. <laughs> Come on, I need you. Did, did we get him? 
Did we win? You did great. You you got so many of them. Little you, Philip. You were that little Philip so bit me. kind. Yeah, they all bit you yeah. a lot. I don't think they were friendly. Yeah, they were not. They weren't. Um, but we took care of them. But we need to get out of here. <laughs> You hear the crashing of trees breaking. Uh, it's like still like a, for a little further off into the distance, uh, uh, but not far off. And you can hear this crashing. Um, you can see puddles of water vibrating uh, with each crash in this uh, rainforest. Nice. Um, and we still have not. We have no idea where this feather is, right? I don't, so, I don't think so. Uh, should yeah, we you, just should we just r- run like or, or get to hiding? I know this is crazy because I just died, but I also feel like this is kind of a cap a diem sort of a thing for me. Like I might not be back here, so like fuck it. Um, you know, if everybody's running, that might make some very very clear cover. Like, um, I, 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 let, let want to go for it. Hide. Yeah, I think I think if we if we hide, man, like it, we, the the feather's gonna be up there, right? You can see right. that all, uh, in, in after the roaring, all of the four winged gliding raptors have moved on Skiddle. from this patch. They okay. have okay. scattered. Let's get where they're going. <laughs> Let's yeah. So we're gonna run with where follow the other animals that are yeah. fleeing. Go ahead and roll a survival check. Okay. Nine for Athena. Twenty-one. All right, Wolf Spain, your keen eyes. Uh, Athena still reeling from uh, their ne- near death encounter. Uh, you are able to follow some of the trailing gliding raptors as they jump from tree branch to tree branch, extending their four wings to catch some air and land on the branches. That's then they so cool. scurry up, get higher on them, and then jump again uh, as they are moving their way through. You are able to follow these creatures uh, pretty well until they come to uh, a new scene. A flurry of leaves fall from the canopy with each earth-rattling tremor as you approach the bank of a fast-moving river. The overlapping roars and snarls drown out the roar of the waterfall as the river tumbles over the cliff face to your right. You see the last of the gliding raptors reach the opposite bank, having scrambled up to the highest branches on the bank that you are on and glided over to the other side. A couple fell short of the safety of the canopy and are waddling awkwardly across the muddy riverbank towards the safety of the trees. You can see that they are not as adept at uh, terrestrial movement as they are as gliding. To your left, however, where the river is far narrower, a huge feathered behemoth clamps its razor-sharp jaws around the neck of a wounded three-headed hydra, tearing it off in one savage motion. The gliding raptors are on the bank opposite you. The part where the river is narrowest is where these titans are clashing. What would you all like to do? How far away is that narrow path? You guys are like 45 feet. Okay, from, so it's close. From these, yeah, they are, you are like in the brush, uh, okay. uh, like just shy of the, the river bank here. Um, and we're pretty sure that those feathered ones, gliding ones, are the ones that we need, right? Yeah, yeah. But there's they're, a they're of the only days. four winged ones you've seen. You okay. both rolled very badly on your nature checks. <laughs> yeah, so. We're gonna. We're just hoping that that's what we need. Um, <laughs> this one's covered in mud. I bet. I bet they might be purple feather. I feel yeah. like. Oh, I feel like we gotta grapple that. We gotta do it. Oh, I'm go ready. for it. He's <laughs> <laughs> just gonna like mud dive into the mud, like mud wrestle with this this turkey. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There are none on the mud bank n- that you're on. They're yes. all on the opposite on the, on so the opposite side. Cross how far to cross the river? It is a 45 foot wide river. Easy peasy. <laughs> can you get there? Oh, all right. Right. You can <laughs> see that where the 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 gap is that river narrows. It's okay. like a kind of a rocky uh, neck. Uh, and that's about like 15 feet across at the at the narrowest. But okay. that is also where like this creature is actively like gouging out the eyes of the Hydra. The Hydra's coming around, but rah, she clamps its jaws around its uh, legs. It okay. is it is vicious. They are churning the water. Feet. So here's what I could do is I could charge 25 feet and then I could throw one of my hand axes yeah. to try to get it down. Yeah. I could also shoot um, a bow. I and I, I, all right, and I guess I'm wondering. Oh yeah, or you could shoot your bow. Between I guess we two, both one of us do it. it. Yeah. <laughs> um, we try out and and just try to kill one of these. Does 
There wasn't any stipulation about not killing the creature we need to get the feather from, right? The holy man just said he needed the feather as a as a proof of your friend's worthiness, that he is worthy of coming back from the land uh, beyond the okay. life. Okay. Keep... Yeah, I think I'll charge out twenty five feet and throw this hand axe. You're going you're wading into the river. Yeah, let's do it. Right. I'm going to do it. You step. I guess it might be difficult terrain. You so. step off uh, of the well. bank and you immediately feel the pull of the strong current. Uh, it is also uh, very, very deep immediately. You are, like, swimming as soon as oh, you, like, walk into okay. that bank. Please roll an athletics check. Okay. Five. With a five. <laughs> you are pulled 20 feet closer to the edge of the waterfall. Oh, no. Okay, that's not good. That's not good at all. You have about 45 feet to your right before the, the current drags you off the side of the waterfall. Okay. Dina, what are you Only, thinking? Uh, the second I see that happen, Dina's going to grab her rope and toss it over. Great, in yeah. The, in the sword. And, and aren't there, like, any boulders or anything that she can, like, brace? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There, yeah. Some boulders on there that you can kind of steady yourself on. Yeah. Uh, the rope lands in the water near you, uh, Dina. Sorry, okay. I thought it was a good idea, and I'm, I'm sorry, I don't want you to drown. <laughs> uh, can I try to grab onto that rope? There? Yeah, yeah, you do so. Okay. Uh, well, if you're, if you're, so I'm holding onto the rope. Yeah, yeah. And you're, you've got me braced, so I won't go further back. I'm going to try to keep getting over it, Fantastic. and hopefully we can, Perfect. Like, span the river. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, as, as you are g- getting a hand on the rope, you see that out of the severed neck of one of the Hydra, two more heads are also already starting oh. to sprout out, oh, <laughs> attacking this giant feathered behemoth. Uh, it, it's like razor-sharp claws against its razor-sharp teeth. They are, they are tearing into each other. Um, great. So you have a hold of the rope. You are kind of treading water 45 feet from the edge of the yeah. waterfall. I'm going to start swimming my way through this water slash blood, I assume. Yeah. It's spilling out from these behemoths that are fighting. Everyone knows dwarves are natural swimmers. <laughs> and I'll try to swim Athletics. my way over to the edge. Athletics again. Okay. Hopefully this goes better than last time. Four. You, oh, the current... No. You try to like kind of steady yourself on a rock that you feel I underfoot. Feel like I had to try. It pulls you now. You are now but a mere 15 feet from the edge. Of, no, wait, what is it? 45 minus 20? 20, 25. You are a mere 25 feet okay. from the edge of the waterfall now. Did you let go of the rope? I think I got pulled off the rope. Ah, crikey. I tried. I tried too hard. Um, and where am I? Like, am I cl- still pretty close to the near side of the bank? Uh, you you haven't even made it halfway. Okay, so yeah, so I'm close. It's better to go back than to try to keep going over. Yeah, it's still gonna be the same DC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To try to swim I'm back, but you're this. like you're like 15 feet offshore to, to put a a number on it. Yeah, I'm stuck in this. Uh, I'm gonna look back down the river. Is there a rock that I'm heading towards? There are some rocks that are like kind of on the on the lip of the of the waterfall. Uh, that is kind of like the le- like the smooth river rocks that have been run over, you know, by the water for okay time immemorial. Uh, but they don't stick out of the waterfall until they like, do. The yeah, very yeah, lip. they make a little bit of chop and they okay. stick out of the water a little bit. It's not like they don't cause like you know they don't have their own like little bridge across at the lip. Yeah, but there are some rocks that are uh, some harder rocks that are protruding from the water. There. So instead of fighting the river, I want to turn and go with the river and I want to look at one of the rocks and I want to cast uh, my cantrip mold earth and try to get the rock to like lift me up out of the water yeah. as I ride it yeah you give in to the, the, the current of the river and well, it takes spy. you down and even just like trying to like I'm like get my feet on the flat surface of it and then mold earth to just like lift it up out yeah. of the water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like still balancing. You like hit it like like you're 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 like kind of prone in the water as your feet make contact with one of these rocks. <sighs> your mold earth shifts the rock upwards and the rock kind of like stands you up. You are you're now like kind of protruding like uh maybe like two or three feet out of the water. Okay. Uh, on this rock here. Still like I, I would say I still went close to the river, so maybe t- 15, 10 feet from the edge uh, of your bank. Yes, of the, or of the lip to the waterfall. Oh yeah, yeah. You're like five feet from. You can okay. look over the edge. the edge. It is a dizzying <laughs> drop 
<laughs> you are still, you still have like 30 feet to okay. span on the river to get to the opposite bank. Okay. You can see that uh, some of these uh, gliders have now managed to reach the, the edge of the canopy and are already cr- scrambling up the trees and going deeper into the jungle. But like, roll a d4. One. There is one <laughs> gliding raptor that is still struggling in the mud bank. All right. Um, um, Thina, what are you thinking? Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, she turns to no one in particular. is like, now. The hill dwarf is a really sturdy filler, and he can, he can use, he can tell he's molding the earth to, to, to save him from his impending doom. I'm okay. Look at it. He's all, he's all, he's, he's brill, bloody brilliant. Um, Dina, to your left, you can see this feathered behemoth and the hydra are just tearing into each other again. The the hydra uh, heads have seemed to like clamp down on each of the appendages of this giant feathered behemoth, uh, and it is struggling in this moment. Reading from the uh, Master's Manual, he also says, now the Hydra are immense reptilian monsters with multiple heads, and just rattles. <laughs> Get the last one! <laughs> right. uh, all right, Wait, um, um, uh, so you are no longer holding on to the rope, correct? No, I am at least, what, 45, 50 feet down the riverbank yeah. towards the waterfall. To your yeah. right, yeah, if you yeah. look, uh, yeah. And the the fight is over here, correct? Yeah, yeah. This okay. is happening like over there. They're, they're they have not. They are too busy with each other yeah, to like yeah. notice you. That you do also see that that is where the river is the narrowest. In it's shallow. a 15, yeah. 15 foot uh, chasm at the most. Oh, so you could try to run under the legs of the behemoth and cross the river there. I'm thinking that's Ooh. what the girl's gonna do. Yeah. Um, Maybe. Maybe down a it's, health potion before you do that. You know, <laughs> that is fair. I would, uh, I, I is assuming that you didn't use the one that you had given to me very I kindly. Used, I beginning. used mine. God bless yeah, you. You each had one at the top. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> I figure Wolf's Bane before every mission is like, let me make health potions first. I love it. Like, it's the first thing he does. Like, we're not going to need it. And then we lost somebody. And then, yeah. uh, great. Then, then, you know, we'll, with a teeth and boom, the, the, the cork and, and down it as she, begins kind of like slowly walking her way over towards the bank. Yeah. Do we notice, are there any sort of like footholds or like, is it all just, does it look like deep water? I mean, you saw, um, you saw Wolfsbane as soon as he took a step off of the bank, he was already like yeah. swimming. Yep. Uh, if you had a, a long stick or something to poke with, you could ascertain better, but otherwise right. just eyeballing it, it is hard to judge the depth of, of, of fast moving water. Good idea. I take out my quarter staff and I'm gonna. Yes. Stina's St- gonna pull vault as best she can into like to get her in to- as close to the middle. I think she's gonna try and like use. She's splitting the difference between like getting close to where it seems that the river is less and uh-huh. also farthest away. And then like, great worst case scenario, she can on the diagonal try and hit awesome. the bank. So you're trying to like uh, pull vault from the muddy bank across like as far as it'll get you. As far as I can, yeah. Okay. Are you, are you going to the narrow portion? Trying to, yeah. Okay. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of splitting the difference between... Yeah. So, so not get... not the narrowest portion but just like a little shy of shy yeah. of it. Okay, okay, yeah. The river's still wide here but uh, there's a bit of a better better uh, rocks on either side. Yeah, go ahead and roll let's say an athletics. Lovely. 17. Ooh, 17. Nice. And what is your strength? Perfect. Yeah. With that, a 17, you are able to pole vault yourself 15 feet into the river. Uh, please roll an athletics check. That's a seven. seven. You get dragged 20 feet down river. You have uh, 45 feet to go before you get to. Wolfsbane is. Wolfsbane is getting ready to catch Stina. Yeah. yeah, perfect. And it was 2d4 for that health potion, correct? Plus four. Yeah, 2d4 plus two. two. Plus two. I'll make sure I get myself that before. Three plus two, so five. I'll take it. Yeah. All right. The behemoths continue to tear into each other. The uh, large feathered one has managed to break free of the grapple that the Hydra has put him under and is now uh, trying to savagely tear off another head. Uh, In doing so, you can see that another bloody stump is already blossoming with two new heads. This is now turning into a seven-headed Hydra. Woo! You won't have to deal with that later, mate. Just get out of the river. Very little (laughs) 
You can see that the gliding raptor is struggling through the mud, uh, but it is like maybe 20 feet from the edge of the canopy okay. and then into the safety of the trees. Okay. I would say, Thena, tr- keep, uh, I'll, I'm waiting to, to try to catch you in case you don't get over to the oh, bank. God bless you, Mike. So I would, I think Wolf Spain is more concerned about Thena surviving such a swim, swim. You got 30 feet to go to cr- uh, span the bank. Mm-hmm. What would you like to do? Oh, oh great. Um, I think as much as possible, she's going to try and like t- put her direction even probably trying swimming up so that like with her yeah, maybe yeah, yeah. she tries to like land as as much yeah, towards yeah. the thing but Not trying to fight it and i and i don't know if this counts as difficult terrain it oh it does unless you have a swim speed then as a i don't but as a natural explorer difficult terrain does not slow my group's travel i love that Whee! fucking nailed it so uh did you go ahead and give me that athletics check to see if you make it to the bank Peace. uh God bless you. You are pulled another 20 feet closer to the uh, edge of the waterfall. Oh, gosh. Holy you hell. now have 25 feet to go before you go over the edge. Great. Is there any movement towards, or is it just straight straight down? Yeah, you kind of are moving like a little like diagonal. parallel, but like the current just gets you too strong and, yeah. and pulls you back to the, uh, to the heart of it. You have 20 feet to go to try and span the river. Great. Mm-hmm. Uh, Wolfsbane, what are you doing? You're still just at the ready? I think, ready just, I think I have to be at the ready until I know for sure that um, Dean is out. So, right. yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm continuing to to use my cantrip mold earth to, like, shift where the rock is on <laughs> yeah. the edge. Just kind of, like, like, catch. Like and, Pong. And, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. It's like, oh, oh she's going to oh, go a little that way. All right, damn it, Dean. <laughs> All right, Thena, uh, then if you'd <laughs> no. like to make another athletics check or if you've got something else that you can think of. Um, I cast mending. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I fix the river. I, I, I really want to I try and mend where the Hydra's head has been. No. <laughs> ripped into it. Uh, yeah, I think I think she's going to try and just like haul ass as right. much like fully. Yeah. Haul that ass. Let me see it. Okay. There we 18. Go. With an 18, you are able to now brave the current of it, and you are able to fight your way through it. You come up on the other uh, side of the mud bank, panting, wheezing, uh, and soaking wet as you drag your feet out of the water. You are now safely on the bank. You can see now that the gliding raptor is a mere five feet from the edge of the canopy. What would you like to do, both of you? Do you want to rope? Uh, I, I just say... Get the feather. All right. <laughs> uh, and I will I will slowly uh, use mold earth to like, I'm picturing just like spin the rock sort of over other rocks yeah, to yeah, try yeah. to get to the edge. But I'm like taking my time. I think I'm like, Thena, get the feather. I'm yeah. going to let you worry about that. I'm going to make sure I don't die. Yeah. yeah, yeah. In, in moving in this manner, it'll be like another like maybe like minute. Okay. Uh, to take you to like span the span the other side. Mm-hmm. Uh, at that point, Nina, you are you are safe on this bank. The behemoth now as it roars in triumph as it tears off two more hydra heads, only to already be bubbling with two more, I guess four more that are gonna come and sprout from its neck. Ah, oh, Crikey! Come here, right little friend, right little friend. Come on, go on, little fitted fella, uh, and. Is uh, she's gonna slowly kind of begin to approach as as kindly as possible? Animal as, handling. Yeah, that's a that's an eleven for animal handling. <laughs> right, it's all right. We're gonna, get you. We're, gonna, we're gonna get you out of there. We're gonna get you out. Yeah, you you're you're able to get close within within melee range of this creature as it is like it is not like n- too nervous that you're near it, but it is also a wild animal. Mm. Um, so it is kind of. Cautiously, still trying to go towards the the canopy here. She yeah. wouldn't get you your friends. Uh, Athena, you are. Oh no, it's not. Sorry, Athena. Wolfsbane, you are now about halfway through the uh, over the river. Uh, okay. The blood now is pooling and frothing in the churning waters. Uh, it's being split by your mold earth that is uh, yes. cutting through the water here. <laughs> and um, you keep on keeping on. We go to Athena. What would you like to do? She's gonna pounce. <laughs> And, yeah, and and get try and get it in grapple. A, is that just a strength? Strength be strength. Great, a dirty twenty. Dirty twenty, love to see it. Yes, and, and that's with advantage, right? Um, it is. I guess you got a dirty no, no, no. twenty. He's yeah, he's got advantage on attacking things when he get when oh, he. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. 
But with the 14 on the uh, Micro Raptor GUI, uh, you succeed. Great. You manage to jump on top of it and you have grappled uh, the creature now. By this point, uh, we see that Wolfsbane is now taking his first steps onto the other side of the riverbank here, uh, joining you on this side. Now it is just a, a matter of plucking the feather. <laughs> Great. Um, yeah, as, as much as much as possible, I'm sure like with with the franticness, like hopefully something has kind of puffed out, but Athena's going to try and get like a, a, a generous handful, but nothing nothing too excessive. But yeah. we'll try and get like a thing and just kind of... Yeah, you grab a handful of the tail feathers <laughs> uh, and I'm going to roll a D4 for this. You managed to pull three feathers nice. from the, the, the micro raptor. Uh, all right, little buddy. All right, all right. You're on your on your way, on your way, on your way. <laughs> Scrambles up. You see, once it gets to the canopy, the, the tops of the canopies, it like kind of looks back over the carnage and <laughs> glides from tree branch to tree branch, Logistic. hopping and jumping uh, deeper into the jungle. Wolf Spain runs up. Oh, did you did you get the feathers? Oh, yeah. Oh, that really went sideways. Oh, was, that was bad. Absolutely metal, though. You you, you move in the rocks. I, I, I was, oh, I was, it was uh, quick thinking. I was really, I thought I was going to go for the falls there for a second. We think about these. Oh, we should get out of here. Yeah. yeah, that looks real bad. Great. You walk deeper into the jungle. Uh, and you come to a stop once you've uh, the roar of the river has faded away. And you hear more steady not rumbling, but like big, heavy, thudded footsteps. And a pair of spear-faced behemoths streaked with purple paint lumber out of the tree line on either side of you. Humanoid riders pull on beaded reins that bring the spear faces to heel. Clad in brilliantly feathered armor, one of the riders draws a club embedded with obsidian shards. A twig snaps in the brush, drawing your focus to the archers waiting in the trees. The lead rider throws down a pair of looped ropes and motions for you to slip them around your wrists. What would you like to do? Heal and wheel met. <laughs> and that is where we'll end the adventure for the night. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes! All right. You guys survived. Woo. We did. That was scary there yeah, for a while. By the skin of our team. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. So we just uh, took a look at this dino world. And I'd love to know just right off the top, like what are some moments from this uh, encounter that stuck out to you? What are some moments that struck you? I loved the behemoth battle with the Hydra that was going on in the background. I definitely got that like King Kong Lost World vibe yeah. of, oh, we don't want to mess with that. Yeah. Like we could easily die in this world. So we have to be careful. And I liked, I mean, even from the very beginning with the behemoth that you came face to face with uh, and, and being noticing we're sort of like surrounded by all these nests. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I felt like immediately we had to be careful and mm -hmm. that was really exciting. There's a really nice, um, with that danger also comes like a very lovely kind of like, especially with that moment of like, there's opportunities to play with that danger. Where am I trying to say that? Like within that danger one, it's like, okay, we're not the direct object of ire, but we could be. So like, there's kind of a fun pressure to play with as far as like, mm -hmm. you're not in the danger zone just yet, but you could be. And yeah, like, yeah can you still complete the mission while things are crumbling around you? And then also with that, like an interaction with the first behemoth, like is a really nice opportunity to play with, like not all forces of aggression in the world, whether or not like the real world or the fantasy world are based in like, well, I want power. Like some of mm -hmm. it is just like mama bear wants to protect mm -hmm. their young. And yeah. like, that is um, a fun also kind of way to, to play with temperature when creating a world or creating, like yeah. you were playing in a world and interacting. Yeah. It was fun to have that sense of, Oh, we're, we're definitely not the top of the food chain and we're trying to figure out where exactly we fall. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that was, 
That was cool. And, and just like the different, what I realized as you were explaining the dinosaurs that I didn't think about is because I have actual like historical context of what these dinosaurs look like based on all the dinosaur content that I've <laughs> consumed, it didn't take much for you, for me to create a very rich visual image based on your descriptions. Mm. Because like with the behemoths, I had like, oh, I'm picturing specific dinosaurs that I know. Yeah. And that was really fun. I think sort of leaning on that imagery that I'm familiar with mm -hmm. helped me flesh out the world in my own head yeah. in a way that was really fulfilling. And it's so interesting because, it, you know, I, and I said this sort of at the top, but we talked about like, you know, dinosaurs feel like sort of this weird thing to kind of pull into the game. But I immediately was like, oh, I love this. Yeah. I'm so excited yeah. about like playing in a dinosaur world. Um, it was, it was so much fun, you know, dealing with like, uh, essentially velociraptor pack tactics. <laughs> yeah. And we had like all these sort of different types of creatures that we were interacting with. Um, and the, and the environment was really rich too. All the different, we had the field and the forest and the river, like it was all very varied and, and interesting problems to solve. Yeah. I, I like that you mentioned that you have this historical context, right? Of what dinosaurs look like. So mm -hmm. I'd love to do like a little like dino ID yeah. game. What dinosaurs did you recognize in this session? Uh, starting like we can start off by the meadow or just off the top of your head. What are some that you like? Well, well, I don't know if it, I'll tell you what I what I pictured in my head. Uh, I don't remember what they're called, but the like armadillo looking ones with the hammer tails. Anglosaurus. Is, Anglosaurus is what I pictured yep. in the first scene. Uh, the velociraptors is what I pictured surrounding mm -hmm. uh, Athena. Um, the behemoths, uh, I was picturing like the one with the big plates and the spike tail. Yeah. It's similar to the armadillo one. Stegosaurus. Stegosaurus. Yeah, 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 yeah. You got it. You got it. Uh, and that's, and then the, uh, I, I don't know. I, I don't know about like the four winged things or some of those Terrible were a little ask. more. Yeah. I was more kind of extrapolating with those, but I still yeah. had a writ. I mean, you had four winged. I sort of pictured a smaller four-winged velociraptor, Correct. honestly, yeah. but um, yeah. My, my first my first thought, and again, not to try and put too fine of a hat on it, was like the, the scene in Jurassic Park. Is it a Triceratops one? Like yeah. Sam yeah. Neill is like, and it's breathing really heavily. Yeah. I don't know if it's... There's also so many details that like, oh, I was absolutely an undiagnosed ADHD child because I was like, oh, I don't know what's happening in this movie, but like Sam Neill's laying on a Triceratops and it's breathing heavily. Like, is that a mama? Like, it, yeah. like there's so many things that in like watching it again as a doll, like, oh, I did not catch this plot. <laughs> um, but it definitely like had echoes of that. Like, yeah. they're just, you know, yeah. there's such a delicate balance between like danger and just protecting young and like just animals. Yeah, they're just, yeah. They're just, they're just scaly little animals. I really wanted feathered. exactly like that. Like give make these dinosaurs feel like animals because yeah. that's at the end of the day that's what they are. They are just trying to eat and mate just like the rest of us. Um, <laughs> yeah. It is fun uh, so the, that the the, uh, the four winged gliding raptor that you were trying to uh, get a feather from I actually pulled the stat block from that from uh, these folks called paleo games uh, oh, they have cool. uh, they're releasing a new like 5e like supplement book where it's all dinosaurs oh, cool. and they like redo the stat blocks they have like um, and, and it's made by like people like uh, the paleo art is done by a paleo artist like these are people who are like have PhDs in uh, in like paleontology and yeah. are, like making stat blocks that reflect what these animals might have actually been like. Uh, um, so that was one of them. Amazing. The micro raptor gooey uh, from paleo <laughs> games was a stat block that they are offering for free as well as the U Tyrannus Huali. Let me try that again. The U Tyrannus Huali. Uh, that was the one that was fighting the, the Hydra. Because wow. oh, originally I was just going to make it a, a, a T-Rex, but I was like, no, man, I want to pull pull something else. And yeah. the paleo art they have for these guys looks terrifying. Excellent. It is like uh, just these like ginormous creatures. With, oh, my God. I, w I would want to get this source book so that way. Because the, the, the monster's manual has like in the in the basic monster manual, there are like plesiosaurs, plesiosaurs ankylosaurs, pteranodons, triceratopses, and 
Tyrannosaurus Rexes and in Volo's guys, there's a couple of more. Um, but yeah, I I I, I loved uh, having this paleo art from Paleo Games to reference. Yeah. Um, I also pulled a little bit from uh, Black Citadel RPG. Ooh. They have an article where they um, one of the writers. Let me see if I can uh, find the name here. Uh, who goes by Harry? Uh, Dinosaurs in D and D Five E: How to Use and Improve Them Even More. Uh, just lists a couple of other like action oriented things that these monsters might be able to do. Nice. Uh, that's where I got the um, for the Velociraptors. They don't have that 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 wisdom saving throw. Made y'all roll was due to their. Um, clever girl feature yes! that came from Black Citadel RPG. If you'd gotten a 14 or lower on that uh, saving throw, uh, all the other Velociraptors in the ambush would have been invisible until they attacked. Oh, oh that's God. amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That um, is so good. So that was very helpful just because it is, like, the more I play d d the more I'm realizing like a lot of these monsters are just hack and slash multi-attack. Mm -hmm. So this gives did give a little bit more flavor nice. to the Velociraptors that I appreciated using. Uh, and we'll also put links to all of those resources in the description down below. Yeah. So that was something that really helped flavor and it, 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 like influence the way that I like kind of described and, and, and ran these things. Yeah. Um, it definitely felt like we didn't get into really the only creatures that we fought were the Velociraptors, but it did feel like there was a lot of different creatures like the the world felt very full mm -hmm. um with everything that was going on and, and also i mean i also liked it was there were also mysteries that we didn't really suss out with like the effigy and mm -hmm. some of that stuff that was like oh this is a cool world mm -hmm. that holds secrets that we don't really have the time to dig into right now but <laughs> for survival reasons <laughs> yeah but it makes you curious about just these plateaus yeah. that exist. Um, yeah. So I, yeah, I really just, I didn't expect to love having yeah. dinosaurs in the game so much. And it's so much fun. Yeah. It's just like, that's cool. You found resources of a variation. Cause I know, mm -hmm. yeah, as you were saying, um, the monster manual only has some. So to have this yeah. like a richer context uh, yeah. and, and to vary up their abilities more. It's yeah. exciting. It's and exciting. One thing that's also cool too. I just I, I'm in love with paleo games, and I would love to like I want to see this this book when it comes out. I think probably by the time that this airs, uh, their Kickstarter will have already closed. But make sure to check them out because um, they also have uh, like mag uh, optional magic abilities for these different ones. Like uh, oh. some of the magical rules for the um, the micro raptor gooey, which you guys were trying to get a feather from, was that a familiar micro raptor may be used as a familiar via the find familiar spell or any <gasps> similar effect. Oh. Shimmering feathers, micro raptor is protected by a layer of iridescent feathers that can be used to misdirect and confuse attackers. When hit by an attack, micro raptor can use its reaction to increase its AC by two until the end of the turn. It can do this twice, then requires a short rest before it can do it again. Nice. So it does have like some ways to kind of like boost some arcana right yeah. into these uh yeah. into these creatures well, i feel like that i mean especially uh, uh, D, D, just the magic element to D, D adds so much to the game i mean that's why i played an eldritch knight because i'm like i want to play fighter but but having magic is just so resourceful so clutch. literally saved my life <laughs> yep um but it's just so much fun to have that element in so i think adding you know those magical tricks to your dinosaur mm -hmm. um is interesting i think it would be interesting too to flavor that like how can you if you're thinking of adding dinosaurs and you're and you're playing you're throwing dinosaurs in and they don't have a magic magical ability or there are certain things that they uh i, I think you could flavor that you yeah. definitely add that in i mean i'm thinking of like you know what could you do with a t-rex where if you like you don't move it can't see you but yeah. you know playing with yeah. some stuff like that uh, but what else can it do um for, yeah, for the U Tyrannus, uh, Paleo Games did uh, that it can do a frost bellow, uh, an unnaturally cold call that caused like a twenty foot cone of yeah, ice yeah. to come out. So yeah, I think there's a lot of fun stuff that you can do. This yeah. and I mean like you know your imagination is the limit. They can be as magical as you want. I I love like imbuing a lot of realism into my games, which is why I went for a lot of like the feathery yeah. dinosaur yeah. descriptions instead of like the classic scaly yeah. uh, look we all grew up with. Which brings me to another question. How did, I didn't use the word dinosaur uh, 
almost at all when I was DMing yeah. this. I used the was term that behemoth. behemoth. Pretty intentional. That was intentional. Yeah. That's also I, I got that from from the monster manual because in it's like the little like flavor text that you get. Dinosaurs or behemoths are among the oldest reptiles in the world. Because I think that word dinosaur mm. is so loaded. Yeah. Yeah. Behemoth. I think conveys the awe that an inhabitant of this world would have for like seeing this type of a, a rare creature. What, what did you think about that? I absolutely Tommy? would agree. And, and at first I was like, okay, behemoth, behemoth, behemoth. Like what am I what, like trying to like go through the Rolodex of the monster man? I'm like, what does that look like? What do I look? And then I'm like, Oh, okay. This is not, this is like a catch all like sort of term. I, I, I I would never have noticed that you had not said the word dinosaur because you you didn't need it. Like yeah. you had done mm-hmm. such a, it, it, it it's such a good way to cap to capture just that again that sort of sense of wonder, which is also I think very like intuitive to the world as yeah. well. That like I feel like maybe because dinosaurs are rarer to D and D that like yeah they would be like a precious sort of mythology to them as well. And I think that taps into, I think what's fun too, especially, you know, getting into adding more of the arcana and magic to dinosaurs. Like I've run some dragons in my campaign and I've also fought dragons. So, and dragons are cool. And sometimes I just look at the monster menu and read about them because I think they're interesting. So I know a bit more about the lore of, dragons so i think as a dm if your characters have come if you're looking for something with that same level of excitement as a dragon but you want more mystery about what they're able to do and the world that they inhabit adding drag or dinosaurs or behemoths into the world will definitely be a nice shift in flavor for your players um, it does kind of like help put them up against like with the dragons and chimeras and hydras of the world, like yeah. a, a class of behemoths. Mm-hmm. Like it, it yeah, it's, it, it, it contextualizes it. In a yeah. And I liked way. how you had a hydra in the world too. So it, so it existed in the same world. Yes. Uh, yeah. I feel like that tied it together of like, okay, these are on the same plane. They fight each other. Oh, yeah. So kind of put you in. Yeah. It, it just, it tied it together in a nice way. I like that. And with the effigy as well, that kind of had like got my brain, like my servos were, were, were starting to hiss a little bit just with the whole, like, I wonder like with that effigy and like with the holy person, like I'm, I'm sure there must be like people who used to worship dinosaurs or like yeah. that there's probably, there's a probably really, really easy segue into how do like, how do priestly classes like yeah. the cleric or the the palin or whatever like use like merge nature and and faith-based magic mm. in with that like there's there's a lot more um of a blur i guess between yeah. those two entities yeah that. For for the cliffhanger at the end, we did introduce the spear-faced writer yes what, what did y'all think about that how was that oh. That well, was one thing that I was like classic dinosaur thing. Someone's yeah. got to be writing one of these. Yeah, yes. buddy. <laughs> I mean, I, I also, uh, I mean, yeah, I've pictured uh, the Flintstone. I mean, not as cartoony, but it was just fun to have that real world. It actually made me think of, uh, uh, oh, why can't I think of the the video game with the robot dinosaurs? Um, Horizon Zero Dawn. Horizon Zero Dawn, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I pictured like that. They added that to in, in the second uh, game. It was just so, f- more what I'm getting at is fun to see the world of dinosaurs exist side by side. It's just another way to tie in the world of like, this feels real that, mm-hmm. you know, humans would, or humanoids would tame these creatures and mm. use them. Um, it's really fun. And and immediately I'm, oh, I want to learn more about yeah. the this civilization. I love the cliffhanger. You yeah. know, it all it all ties together. So and I love the difference between, like I loved how focused your your character was on like preservation, and I think it made us engage with the dinosaurs or the the behemoths in such a fun way, mm-hmm. where we got to learn more about the world through that. And that mm. was yeah, that was fun. Yeah, <laughs> and dangerous because it's <laughs> well, like a yeah. little fun, like and then they killed you. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so you've had a taste of behemoths uh, in this encounter. What is 
if you were running a session, running a one shot, mm -hmm. DMing something, what is a dinosaur encounter you would want to put in there? I got one locked and loaded if y'all need a moment to think. Um, I do think, and we sort of had this, um, a, a little bit of this energy, but I was, I was picturing it going further in, in, in that moment in King Kong where they're running and trying not to get crushed or yeah. stomped on. I feel like you could blend this with, if you've been listening to our chase episode mm. and blend them together with, okay, how careful are you going to be with like dodging, you know, oh, this, are you going to get crushed by an elephant's yeah. foot or, or not an elephant, but like, uh, yeah, these big creatures. Uh, and then you've also got these little creatures dish, dashing in and out also yeah. trying to eat you. I feel like that could be a really fun scene to create. Like uh, a stampede. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. If we're talking encounters, I would have to think a little bit, but especially with what you were saying about how like there are magic features or like find familiar features. Mm -hmm. I, I definitely, I was definitely sorely tempted by Athena. Like, do I go the beast, the beast master route? And like, yeah. does she have yeah. a pet? Does she have a, do, does she have like a pet? I, th I think there's a really, a really nice opportunity for that also in yeah. this, in this world, especially as a, with, yeah. with the ranger class. I, I, I am now kind of glomming on to this idea of, you know, whichever type of behemoth it was that we encountered in in the 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 plains area. But like from a conservation standpoint, like a mate like setting up like a mating setting up a mating process of Oh gosh. <laughs> like, yeah. like you know, an endangered like an well, endangered that, species and like how do you Yeah, you know, like you've got to corral this creature into this pen and yeah. this cre and you know find the right herbs going back out mm -hmm. into this space to like, you know, or rehabilitating one yeah. and like yeah. to be, to be re-released back into the wild. And how do you, you know, especially if it's like, it, it, you know, building in like mythos of the land, if like certain people want to harvest or, or industrialize or sell like things yeah. for parts and like how do you preserve and like work with oh, them yeah. and people mm -hmm. are trying to get your resource and like there's a lot of i think yeah. yeah you could definitely do a thing where it's like oh they were like these things were all hunted to death yeah. in the jungle which is why you can only find them like on the plateaus or like yeah. in these right. remote areas i know there are cultures that you know that is their what they do is they hunt them and you know a lot of their buildings are just bones of these behemoths yeah the ecology um, of that yeah i feel like there's such a rich world you can create with this in mind the encounter that i had in mind i would love to do like um in the underdark like a uh, big ocean that's just teeming with like plesiosaurs and other <laughs> yes. like aquatic ones. Yeah. Cause I think the aquatic dinosaurs are the scariest. God. Oh yeah. Oh my Nightmare -ish. gosh. Or like you, you imagine trying to like climb a cliff and there's like pterodactyls that are trying to like pull you off <sighs> yeah. while you do so. Yeah. A lot, a lot of yeah. fun stuff that can happen. All dinosaurs there. are just scary and they add that element to the world mm -hmm. of being just you, Never knowing what's going to come out. Yeah. yeah. And if you got a druid in the party, that opens up a whole new <laughs> class of animals yes. that they can turn into. Yep. Dean was almost a druid. I'm too. curious. I'm curious as a, as a DM, was it helpful, just like it was helpful as a player to sort of be able to imagine these creatures based on, you know, background knowledge of dinosaurs. Was it helpful thinking of creatures you might want to put into the encounter, knowing kind of what dinosaurs are out there? I mean, just... You know, thinking now like, oh, yeah, you could have, um, you know, winged dinosaurs coming in and yeah. trying to pull you off a cliff. Like, I feel like that stuff kind of comes to mind more. Did you find that happening more easily or... I found like a lot of inspiration from like the paleo art mm -hmm. and like knowing like, cause I, I, I watched some like dinosaur YouTube videos in my spare time uh, just normally. Um, and yeah, it's just like knowing... I find that it's very inspirational once you know, like, these things lived in a certain type of environment. They hunted a certain type of food. Like, going back to paleo games, they have everything about, like, the diet, the habitat, and the behavior of the oh, different creatures. That's fantastic. Um, like, I mean, even their, like, things like passive perception and stealth aren't, like, based off of the uh, the D&D, &D, like formula, but are just like, oh, no, this creature would have been pretty perceptive. Hyper vigilant. Right. Yeah. I think that, like, yeah, there is... 
just if you can think of an environment and then like the dinosaur that would fit into it or a behemoth that would fit into it, um, like the concept art, the paleo art that comes with the uh, Tyrannus, uh, it shows them like in a snowy, like arboreal forest. Come like, on. and I was like, dinosaurs in snow, like that's something you never think about. Right, uh, right. You always think about them in like these hot deserts or jungles, yeah. but they. They controlled the planet for a good long while. Like they were everywhere. longer than we did. Longer yeah. than we did. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's that's it's yeah. I I just think dinosaurs are awesome, and really I, are. it's I'm surprised at how much I was hesitant, and then immediately was just like, yeah, I love this. This is amazing. Yeah. Um. So if you're, and maybe this is where we get to yeah, loot it or boot it. Boot yeah. it. Put it in the game. Boot it. Get it out of here. What do y'all think? Loot it. Yeah, definitely loot it. I think adding some magical elements to dinosaurs is a great way to weave the world together. Also putting them in combat or in the world with other creatures that are in the uh, monster manual. Um, And I think, yeah, for me, obviously I didn't create the encounter, but I, I feel like it's easier for me to extrapolate like how the whole hierarchy works mm. um how the whole food chain works yeah with dinosaurs that i've seen in mind like i've seen the those stories told as opposed to these fantasy creatures that it's like okay i don't necessarily know as well how all of this fits together right um yeah so loot it awesome i if one of the i'd say fucking loot this to get <laughs> it in there uh, one one image that originally like kind of inspired me when we were going into this was the idea of like you're fighting a T Rex and like you're in the middle of a fight with a T Rex and then just an ancient dragon comes what? down, picks up the T Rex and flies away. Yeah. And it's like oh my god, power scaling. Like yeah. Yeah. the the dragon or the, the 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 dinosaurs aren't the most dangerous. Like it, it nah, reinforces dude. not only are they dangerous, but this world is very dangerous in and, and it, itself. It almost it almost makes it more realistic that dragons would exist in this world because you have dragons and you have different like sizes of dragons Mm. based on like how ancient they are, but having other, you know, lizard creatures that scale in proportion to flesh out that world makes so much sense. Yeah. Um, that's exciting. Yeah. So you heard it here, folks, you need to loot this stuff, put it in your game. Uh, yeah, we can go ahead and wrap up here. Yeah. Tommy, is there anything you want to plug uh, before we close out here? Oh, no. I know uh, nothing nothing personal as of right now except for Dungeon Busters because they rule. Well, Tommy, before we wrap up here, I did want to ask, uh, especially, you know, working with uh, doing it, running a and d club, yeah. what are some tips that you have for and the new players or new DMs uh, who are maybe nervous about getting into it that um, you might suggest? Just any tips or tricks or words of wisdom um i like to bring it all back to this too i think this is a really great gateway as well like to bring something that like not everyone might be familiar with an owl bear but everyone knows like or most people know what a velociraptor is or what Mm -hmm. they look like so i mean this is a really good gateway drug into into the D world for people who are interested and in like but also like especially with a lot of students who are like i've never played before but like i i want to learn or like i've watched stranger things and i'm really interested like it's a really this is a, stuff like this is a really good opportunity like making it accessible mm-hmm. um my number one thing that i always like to try and plug for people who are considering D is just like find a character that you want to play like, and the rest will do itself. Like I knew yeah. I wanted to play the crocodile hunter. Like, you know, I, I knew I, I like it, whether or not like, like I, I would love to play like fantasy James Bond or fantasy Homer Simpson or yeah. like fantasy Don't. Beyonce, like whoever you want to like make a character of like go boldly in that direction. And the world will, will come to you as well. Like it's such, that's the wonderful thing. That's like why I think it's such a, awesome game is that you know there there really is nothing that isn't possible with like Mm. a yes and attitude and with with you know a willingness to get goofy and a willingness to get weird yeah yeah and i think yeah picking from uh the zeitgeist the character that you're interested in is a great way to like get started and see oh maybe okay i like that then you at least have like a a, an image in your head of of the character that you're playing and then 
you can evolve from there and yeah. you can let go of that and continue to see where the character takes you. The number of joke characters that I've created just like, oh, like this is Barry LaCroix and he's <laughs> a rogue and then like all of a sudden like, oh That's no, hilarious. I care very deeply about where yeah. he's going. Like it starts, as, it starts, you start as a joke and then it's like, oh, here I am. Mm -hmm. It's all fun and games until you're rolling death I, saves and I'm you realize you're you wrong this character. <laughs> oh no, I just met her and I love her. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I was immediately terrified when Thena went. I was like, oh, no, why would these animals do this? Thena cares Shut about you. <laughs> yeah, that was, oh man. I, I was... I went more fighter because I wasn't sure exactly what we were going to run into. Woo. Glad I did. Cause, Me uh, too. Yeah, Thunder Wave was oh, clutch. Oh, that was clutch. Um, yeah, that was so much fun. Well, thank you, Tommy, so much for joining us. Thank you, Tommy. Um, thank you so much for having yes. us. You're doing the Lord's work. This is great. And uh, thank you all for tuning in, for listening, or for watching. And we'll see you next time on Dungeon Busters. Bust you later. Thanks for scrolling into this episode of Dungeon Busters. Did you get inspiration from today's experiment? Then consider leaving us a review on your podcast platform of choice. Did we miss something? Would you have done it differently? Let us know on social media at Dungeon Busters Pod. That's D-N-G-N -N Busters Pod. You can follow me on socials at Michael underscore C underscore Hyatt. And you can find me, Diego, on my website, foreverdm.xyz. Thank you to Peter Gertes for our cover art. Our intro music is by Artle Music. Produced and edited by Michael C. Hyatt and Diego F. Salinas.